Identify independent and dependent variables. Three years ago I created a video by the same title that has had nearly 25,000 views. Owing to the fact that it does contain one minor inaccuracy and that I have some improvements to introduce, I've created this replacement video that my older video links to in order to provide improved explanations. We're going to describe independent and dependent quantities and functional relationships. In a function, the input is the independent quantity. The output is the dependent quantity because the value of the output depends on the value of the input. Here's the first function we'll look at, y equals negative 3x plus 5. Here we have the independent quantity, x, and we have the dependent quantity, y. We have to know the value of the independent quantity, x, before we can use the function to figure out the value of y. When a function is shown as a graph, the independent variable or quantity is shown on the horizontal axis, and the dependent variable or quantity is shown on the vertical axis. Let's look at this situation. On average, a young tree in Jackie's yard grows four feet per year. The function h equals four y represents the height of the tree in feet after y years. Which quantity is the independent quantity in this relation? Which is the dependent quantity? The first thing is that the time that has passed is the independent quantity because the number of years that have passed determines the height of the tree. The height of the tree is the dependent quantity because the height of the tree depends on how much time has gone by, how much time the tree has had to grow. And this number, four feet per year, expresses the rate of growth of the tree per year, which is a constant. So this number four is neither independent nor dependent. Let's look at another problem or situation. Mr. Wu is driving at the constant rate of 65 miles per hour on the expressway. The function d equals 65h represents the number of miles d he has traveled after h hours. Which quantity is the independent quantity in the relation? Which is the dependent quantity? Which is neither? Miles traveled is a dependent quantity because miles d depends on the hours driven. The speed is neither the independent quantity nor the dependent quantity. This is actually the slope, or rate of change. The word per lets you know that it's the slope, as well as being the number next to the independent quantity in the function. 65 miles. Again, this is neither the independent quantity nor the dependent quantity. This is the slope, or rate of change. This number, 65, is the answer to the question. How much does d increase when h increases by 1? Hours traveled is the independent quantity. Time is usually the independent quantity in a function or relation. Here's another problem. Jake averages 20 points per game when he plays basketball. What is the functional relationship between the total number of points that Jake scores and the number of games he plays? And then we have multiple choices A, B, C, and D to pick from. The first thing we need to figure out is what comes first. The event that comes first is the independent quantity. We have to think, do the games come first or do the points come first? When Jake looks at the calendar or schedule for the season ahead, does he look at January 13th and say, that will be 24 points? When he looks at the team calendar, does he see the schedule for games or the number of points? What's scheduled first are the games. So the games are going to be the independent quantity. So therefore, the number of points scored will depend on the number of games played. Games come first. We're not going to find out how many points Jake scores until he actually plays the games. Let's look at another problem. A wildfire is consuming 500 acres per hour. The function A equals 500H represents the number of acres the fire consumes during H hours, which is the independent quantity in this relation. As a hint, time is usually independent. Let's look at the answers. Answer A is a number, 500. A number is not a variable or an unknown or variable quantity, so it's not correct. We cross it off as an incorrect answer. For answer B, 500H is not an independent quantity either, so we cross off answer B as well. The answer is going to be H. Time is usually an independent quantity. In this case, the amount of acreage burned depends on the number of hours. One thing we have to remember is that when it comes to independent and dependent quantities, money is usually dependent. Think about it. When you have a job, do you work first or get paid first? The amount you are paid depends on how much you work. Money is usually the dependent quantity or variable. 
as another hint, time is independent. We need to remember that when we see units of time in a function, the var variable representing that unit of time is usually an independent variable. And for further reference and reinforcement, here are links to two videos that can help your memory and understanding of these concepts a lot. The link on the left is to my musical video, One Thing Depends on Another. The link on the right is to the video entitled Dixieroid, and that video shows how Dixieroid can help us to remember the vocabulary we've covered in this lesson on independent and dependent variables and quantities. This has been Identify Independent and Dependent Variables. Thanks for viewing.